everybody, Bill Nichols here, Bill Nichols TV. I have some updated information today on FAA Part 107 and the steps that you need to go through to get your drone license so that you can operate commercially, legally, and some resources to help you do that. Morning, everyone. So I just posted a new article on BillNicholsTV.com. That's my site. I'm just now really starting to get um, content up there. Basically, for every YouTube post that I do, I want to get a written post up there that backs it up so that you have additional information. So I've got a, I've got information down here in the notes, but I also have a large article that I put together on my site, and I wanted to bring you a quick video on updated information for FAA Part 107, what you need to do to get your remote pilot certificate so that you can operate commercially legally. So let's get right into it. So if you go to BillNicholsTV.com, you'll see the um, go to the home, you'll see right away the first article right now is get your drone license step by step, FAA part 107. Click into there and I've got some information. So I'm gonna run you through some basic stuff today and then a couple of resources that I have found and some guidelines by the FAA. So really, up until now, the FAA had a heavyweight process of applying for a 333 exemption. I actually applied for mine um, over three months ago, I still haven't heard anything back. It was a big process. You had a lot of paperwork to fill out. You know, there were some templates out there to do it, but it, you know, it took some time and you really had to work to get that in there. Starting yesterday, August 29th, you can now apply for your remote pilot certificate after passing a multiple choice air safety test, paying the registration fee, and as part of that, passing a TSA background check. So the remote pilot certificate, the goal of it from what the FAA has said is to ensure the applicant possesses knowledge consistent with the privileges of the remote pilot certificate with a small unmanned aircraft systems rating being exercised as well as the ability to manage the risks of flight in order to act as a remote pilot in command. So this is actually a really good step by the FAA. It's not super lightweight and that you've got to put some pretty serious effort into it. You've got to pay a fee to pass it. So that's going to, I think, weed out the people that aren't serious about it and trying to do this for commercial purposes and trying to make a living or make it have this be an additional stream of income for them. But it isn't so heavyweight that you have to be, you know, previously you had to be an actual private pilot, which I thought right from the get-go was ridiculous because the two really don't have anything to do with each other other than understanding the airspace clearly, but operating a drone is nothing like operating a private plane. Let's go through the requirements. We went through this previously, but we'll step through it really quick. You have to be 16 years old and have a government ID with your name and a signature on it. Make an appointment at a test center. There's, I think, 690 test centers. The test is $150. So if you go in, $150, you fail. You have to pay $150 to retake it. You're gonna keep on paying $150 till you pass it. We'll talk about that more later. Pass the test. Once your score is uploaded, you can apply for your remote pilot certificate. Complete the TSA background check. Receive your temporary remote pilot certificate. And then upon request, you need to make available to the FAA your drone, so your small UAS for inspection or testing, and any associated documents or records required to be kept under the proposed rule. If you have an accident within 10 days of any operation that results in an accident or property damage over $500, you have to report that to the FAA under the reporting process. Then you need to conduct a pre-flight inspection to include specific aircraft and control station systems checks to ensure that your drone is safe for operating. This is just good practice. What is the test like? So the test covers five areas, regulations, airspace and requirements, weather, loading and performance and operations, a total number of 60 questions. And then I've got a sample question in here, so you'll see kind of how detailed the questions are. They're, they're not just gonna be really easy questions for you to just walk right in and answer. Now there are study materials available. So the FAA has released a two hour course as well as a number of other resources and practice tests. But the FAA has said that they estimate that a small UAS remote pilot applicant will spend 20 hours of self-study in preparation for taking this initial knowledge test. But so expect to spend about 20 hours studying for this. I would not recommend just going through the FAA two hour course, thinking that you're ready and then going in and spending your $150 to take it. So I went out and I, I was seeking out what are some potential drone schools or some drone pilot ground schools or some you know small drone operator schools and I came across dronepilot, dronepilotgroundschool.com, which is also uavcoach.com. And with them, um, their course has more than 30 lectures, five practice tests. You get access to the instructors during it. Their instructor is a certified pilot. Um, interviews and more, you can print PDFs out. Each of their modules have notes from each of those modules in them. Then they have really great checklists to run through, um, great study items. They have an 11-point study guide checklist. 
And then um, it's $2.99 for a subscription. So it's not cheap, but consider that, you know, you're gonna be paying $150 for the test, maybe once, maybe twice, maybe more than that, depending on how good you are at tests and how well prepared you are. And having a resource like this where everything's all together is going to be a great resource. I subscribe to it. I'm currently going through it. And I can tell you that the content is awesome. Um, so from the FAA, you've got their small UAS study guide and then their two hour training course. So you click on the first link to register there then the second link will take you into the, um, into the actual course. And then Drone Pilot Ground School, I've got a couple of links there for them. So I've got links there to the FAA for you to register to take the course and then for you to sign up for the course. I would recommend probably doing the two hour course and doing another school like Drone Pilot School. Make that investment in yourself so that one, you not only pass the test, but you really have a great amount of knowledge that you can apply so that you're flying safely, you understand the airspace, you understand the things that you're gonna to need to do if you need to get a part 107 waiver. What if you need to fly in the evening hours? What if you need to fly over some people or a populated area? What if you need to fly within five miles of an airport? You can't do that with your part 107. You're not supposed to do that at all or above 400 feet, but you can apply for a part 107 waiver. So having all of this knowledge is really gonna help you become the best commercial drone operator that you can. So you're certified, now what? So here's the basic rules. No flying at night, which is 30 minutes before and after sunset. Uh, no flying over crowds or people. Flight ceiling of 400 feet, unless you're within 400 feet of a skyscraper or a building that's taller than 400 feet, then you can scale that building. So you must maintain visual sight. That doesn't mean that you can use FPV goggles that you can't see through. I'm gonna actually be bringing you a video soon of some Epson FPV goggles where they put a transparent screen in front of you. So you can maintain line of sight of your drone while also seeing what your drone sees. Your speed must be under 100 miles an hour. No operating from a moving vehicle or a covered stationary vehicle. So you're not supposed to be inside of your car operating your drone. Within five miles of an airport without previous clearance is not allowed. And then of course you need to register your drone and then get out there and get certified. So that's it. So these are the basics. I've got notes down below. Hop over to BillNicholsTV.com as well. Subscribe so that you can get more information. I've got a giveaway announcement coming up this week, but I really wanted to get you the updated information on FAA part 107, what you need to do get, to get your remote pilot certificate. And I'll give you a really quick look. This is DronePilotGroundSchool.com. They've got a great, a great site. You can enroll in training. They've got a student login. You can look, take a look at their curriculum. So their curriculum, I'm enrolled in it. Uh, I think that it's great. So far I've gone through the first few modules. So I am cramming this week and next week while at InterDrone. Then two weeks from now, I'm gonna be taking my test, my aeronautical knowledge test to get my remote pilot certificate. So stay tuned, I'll tell you how I do. I will give you my review of the test. I'm not gonna give you any of the questions, but I'll give you my review of it, how difficult it was. But so far I've heard that it is really tricky. I have a couple of people that I've contacted that have taken it. They've passed, but they did a great deal of work to get there. They said that by far the FAA two hour course would not cut it and that they needed to use additional resources. So I just wanted to give you a resource on here, look at a resource that I personally am signed up for that um, I think you know is providing a great deal of information is gonna help me along the way to pass this test. So let me know what your thoughts are. Comments below, have you taken the test yet? If you have, give the review of it you know, down below. How difficult was it? How did you find it? Were there any resources that you used that you found that helped you along the way? Or what questions do you have so that when I take the test, I can incorporate those questions into my next video. So that's it for today, for drone licensing step-by-step, -step, getting the FAA Part 107, your remote pilot certificate, and getting your certification for commercial drone use. So thanks a lot, guys. Stay tuned. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. You keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Have a great day.